welcome everybody to Ignite Humanity Love. Here I am on the screen showing up for you. I'm Lady JB and I am the founder and CEO of Ignite Publishing, Ignite Humanity and Ignite Possibilities. And I am here today to talk to you about all the ways that we can ignite humanity. And of course, we're thinking, why are we igniting humanity? Well, it's so important, it's just like opportunities, possibilities, legacy, all those things that are going to make a massive impact and a huge change in the trajectory of our future. And so I want to show up every day and come into your household, touch your house heart, reach out to you and make sure that you feel connected to not just yourself, but your family, your community and the people around you. And truly that is what is going to ignite humanity. We all need to come together and do something amazing. Now, this morning I was listening to an astrologist talk a little bit about what's happening. It's the month of May and apparently there's all kinds of cosmic things happening in the universe. There's all kinds of movements on the planet. In fact, May 5th is supposed to be a very pivotal day for all kinds of things to unfold. And one of the things she shared, and you may believe this or not, but it's interesting food for thought, is that some of the things that are happening right now on the planet, some of the pressures and some of the pushes and some of the strains and constructs are actually happening to crack open the next iteration of each and every one of us on a global scale. And so some of the challenges and the trials that you may be going through are actually the precursor to the joy and the bliss and the other side of things. And so I just wanted to plant that little seed because you may be watching this show and feel like, JB, I'm not as happy as you are. I'm not as excited as you are. Or I'm not feeling like I'm capable the way that the, some of the other guests on the show have shared. I'm not feeling like life is that much exciting or igniting. Help me out. And what I want to share with you is those trials and tribulations. I call them ignite moments. Those moments, those tough moments, they actually are there to change you, to awaken you to really open you up to what's possible in your life. So if you're facing one of those, it's a good thing because on the other side is a blessing and a lesson and so much beauty that not only is going to change your life, but help you change the lives of someone else. And that's why we do this show. We bring on guests who have had Ignite moments in their life and the wisdom that they have gleaned from it is really at a place where they want to gift it to you to help you help yourself and that will help others. And so let's start with our guest today. Let, let me introduce her, please. I'll share with you. Heather Drummond is a naturopath who owns Healing Vitality. She loves empowering people with awareness and skills to reduce stress and inflammation. She's put together a unique process to support and optimize her clients, whether they are human or animal, from a physical, emotion, and energetic perspective. Uh, one of her past creations was the Intuit Kids Camp, helping kids embrace their intuition and energy awareness. So I think I said it right, Intuit. We'll, we'll ask her. Heather's latest creation is her podcast, Seers, Beers, Knowers, and Doers. The goal is to inspire people to listen to their intuition. So we're going to talk about intuition today. Let's welcome Heather to the show. Thank you so much, JV, for having me today. I am excited to share what I mentioned to you earlier and uh, hopefully inspire others to do something similar. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Well, thanks for being here. I always know that you could be anywhere on the planet. And if you choose to be here, I consider it such a blessing. So thank you in return. Let's talk a little bit about your initiative. Did I say it right? Tell me a little bit about the camp. Oh, the Intuit Kids Camp was actually inspired by one of my dogs, which is an intuitive thing. Um, when I was seeing kids struggling in school, kind of from a variety of different places, but from not belonging mostly, um, it came to me that if they could just follow their intuition at a very young age, hopefully I could inspire them to follow their intuition throughout life and not have that mid 20s late teen teen moments when the intuition sometimes gets unplugged from all of us and we mm -hmm. want to belong more than be who we are um so that camp came about and i did it for three years roughly and then i realized how much energy goes into the education world and how much energy goes into parenting and i'm not in either one so i have <laughs> huge huge admiration for people who have kids and they're in the education field because 
it was amazing how much energy it takes to engage and be with children in a present way. So, um, well, I appreciate what you say about belonging because I've been really blessed to publish over 700 authors. And one of the common denominators that I find in a lot of people's personal story is somewhere in their life, you know, if we just boil it down, they actually did feel like they didn't belong. There was some mm -hmm. part of them that lacked that sense of belonging to family, to culture, to race, to religion, to a city, to a skin color. There was just something that made them feel that lack of belonging. Can you make the connection for me between belonging and intuition? Help me build that bridge. So, the thing is we we need attachment we need to belong in order to be part of a tribe and feel comfortable and safe and yet we also need to be authentic and being authentic comes down to listening to your intuition in my world and so it's a balancing act between showing up as who you are and knowing that you belong but you have to first belong to yourself and and i have a belief and I have a strong faith and I think I belong always with God. Mm. So it's, I'm never alone. So there's always a belonging and that increases my ability to listen to my intuition, but it also increases my ability to show up as who I am. And I believe that we each have gifts that are needed in society, needed in the tribe, so to speak. And if we would show up with our gifts, we would be actually filling the voids, filling the needs that are needed in society. Mm, it's, it's such a good idea. I, I love to think that, you know, we all are given gifts. We all have gifts and we, they, we were blessed with them to use them because they're so, I, I sometimes look at the animal world, like there's porcupines and there's whales and there's narwhals and there's elephants and there's giraffes and there's mice. Like they all have these incredible gifts and attributes and ways that they do things. And we, we love them, we admire them, we want to you know, be with them, spend time with them, see them, witness them, and yet we don't do the same for ourselves. You know, a chipmunk never says, well, my tail's not as fluffy as yours, you know, or a bird never says, well, I, you can fly higher than me. And so in the animal kingdom, we're, we're, we're not seeing, we're, what we are seeing is this beautiful example of gifts and qualities, but we're not always giving that to ourselves. If we were to awaken to our gifts, and sorry, I'm going on a rampage here because I love what you just said, is that those gifts are so precious and everybody wants to see your gifts. Just like everybody wants to see the peacock's feathers and everybody wants to you know, see the lion's mane. We want to see the gifts in each other. Again, going back to intuition, is it something that we feel within ourselves, hear within ourselves? awaken within ourselves today's theme is about inspiration and is it something we inspire within ourselves so the podcast is seers beers knowers and doers well that is only four of the many 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 ways that we each individually receive our intuition so some people it's a song some people like i just got goosebumps as you were talking about the peop the peacock and so that's my way of underlying and highlighting something that's very important or pay mm. attention. Mm. And I asked for those goosebumps to come when I started my naturopath career because I was like, please don't make me miss something important. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dealing with people's health. Please don't make me miss something important. And these goosebumps arrive. So we can ask for signs. We can ask for confirmation and it will show up, whether it's finding a dime on the floor, whether mm. it is a music song that arrives on the radio that is inspiring in the words in which it actually um, says to you. And I'm going to bring up a song that I think everybody should listen to, and it's called Living Your Daydream. And it was mm. part, of, part of America's Got Talent. And I'm losing the person's name. but Living Your Daydream, is that what it's called? The Living Your Daydream, yeah. And if you yeah, can we'll have to look to that, it up. If you can listen to that every day, it talks about how we were fine to be dreaming about being astronauts and superheroes when we were a kid. And when we hit 18, mm, that's too risky. Don't don't be doing that. Like go to the school, get your job. Like and and that was my life. I went to the school, I got my job, and I quit my job at 36. And I started 
I thought I was doing an eat, pray, love thing, but it ended up taking me into this career where I get to work with animals and people and empower them. So it's, um, it, it, it's really true that it, you can find your bliss if you live your daydream. And so that song, I want everybody to listen to it. <laughs> I wish I could I'm going to. I literally like getting my producer to like, let's, I want to hear it after we, yeah. after the show. Yeah. So awesome. let's talk a little bit about what you do now. Naturopath is so important, but a lot of people don't know what that is. Can you just give us the little explanation on what a naturopathic doctor does? So I'm not a naturopathic doctor, but we work very similarly. They have a lot more education. They go through the same amount of education as a medical doctor does. So there's a four year post back that they have to do. Um, my education has some of those similar veins, but for a naturopath, you have the, a little bit more freedom in what you choose to study. Um, so I've got acupuncture, I've got Bach flower remedies, I've got some energy work, I've got the holistic nutrition piece. So I've, I've got this menagerie of things in my toolbox, as well as this thing called life. And people come to me to most frequently overcome something that they have not been able to overcome yet. And so as a naturopath, whether you're a naturopathic doctor or a naturopath, we look at things holistically. So mm. we don't look at one particular symptom in isolation. We look at, we, we go back in time and we're like, oh, what happened when you were a kid that maybe led to this pattern that has created this burnout, you know, or mm. we look, we look holistically at the whole thing. So it you know, it's really beautiful because it's, it is treating something far more bigger than just the symptoms and just the one thing. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are dealing with so many ailments right now, mm -hmm. emotionally, mentally, physically, because yeah. today's inspiration day. Do you have some inspiration on some things that we can, everybody can do every day in everyone's home to just give them that better sense of their well-being and health? Interestingly enough, some things are free. And yeah. It is so easy to do when you have the awareness to do them. A big thing is remembering to breathe, but in stress, we stop breathing. So that's related to something called the vagus nerve. And there's some really easy things that get your vagus nerve, which is your fight and flight, rest or digest nervous system. So it's a parallel system to your spine. It runs down the front of your body. It looks, it's connected to all your senses, your digestion, your breathing, your heart. And a simple hold, if you can put two fingers behind your ear and two fingers in front of your ear on both sides. And I learned this from a lady in South Africa who's a podcast guest named Kelly Marie. And you you hold your face like you are holding the, grand, the most beautiful grandchild and you just love that grandchild. And you can do it one-handed or two-handed, but you hold your face. And if you're doing it one-handed, you can put your arm, your hand underneath where your bra strap would lie or just underneath your um, your armpit and you give yourself a hug and that you can you can just sit there and breathe and you will notice that eventually you will sigh you will take a deep breath you may salivate you may actually notice your shoulders go down you will calm yourself from this like uh, alert place and it, it's it can be done anywhere anywhere you can be driving your car one-handed you know paying attention um you can be sitting at a dinner table you can be watching television anybody can do this whole and it does lower that fight or flight place that most of the planet is in right now because if it didn't happen prior to the last three years it happened right. in the last three years so that's an easy thing. I and like that. I instantly felt more relaxed. I instantly felt that big sigh. I was like, oh, they're going to hear me breathing in the microphone. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I just instantly felt the desire to just take a deep breath and just release. Yeah. What a great, great, great Super suggestion. Easy. I love that one. Really well done. And so mm -hmm. on your podcast, seers, doers, knowers, and believers. Sorry, say it again. Seers, beers, knowers, and doers. And the title, I, when I got the title, I was like, really? That's a handle that nobody's going to remember. <laughs> I'm like, we're seriously gone. And it was two years into the podcast. I remembered that every day driving to work, just like I asked for goosebumps, I would ask, help me see what I need to see. Help me know what I need to know. Help me be what I need to be and help me do what I need to do. Hmm. And that is so great. Say it again uh, a little slower. Folks, get out your pen and paper. Write this down. Say it one more time, Heather. 
So I would ask, because again, I'm dealing with people's health. I didn't want to see everything because I can be overwhelmed with everything, but I was like, help me see what I need to see, know what I need to know, do what I need to do and be what I need to be in any particular order. But those four words were, those verbs were always used as a way of asking guidance. And that's how people can receive intuition among many, many, many other ways. And so I always just felt comforted by making that request and knowing that it would happen. And I was always looked after, always looked after. Um, there's, there's something really defining about it because it's like, see what I need to see and do what I need to do. Because a lot of times we do get caught up on, well, they're doing that. I should do that. And they're doing that. Maybe I should do that. And, oh, look what's happening over here. And we get caught up in what everybody else is doing. We get involved in people's other social media. Like we get wrapped mm -hmm. up and, when you said that, like, help me do what I need to do, it really helped focus in, I think, a lot of the, you know, sort of helicopter life that many of us are having. I think that's a really great suggestion. I hope very inspiring folks write that down. Okay, you got any more, Heather, up your sleeve? <laughs> well, I, I wanted to share something that happened during COVID with my sister and I have permission because I wanted her to be on this show, but she's shy and not somebody who likes to talk about things. Um, but she she was going down a dark place um, during COVID. She works in the education system in Winnipeg. They never closed down. They continued through um, COVID in, I think mostly for the safety of kids and feeding kids, or I'm not sure all the semantics of that, but um, probably about a year in, I just had this inspiration. We had um, been given a gift um, when my aunt passed away. And I'm like, you know, I've, I feel like I need to give that to you. Not all of it, but here's a, here's a chunk of money, um, X, Y, Z amount of money. And you've always wanted to be a philanthropist. How about you use that superhero power of yours where you see people and and inspire them to be their best selves and create joy in the school system as well as for these people by gifting them money because that was always her thing she wanted to she wanted to see people and gift them things like she gifts things and it's like whoa what are you doing she baked 24 coffee cakes for every single librarian in the school division one weekend because she wanted <laughs> to make sure they were seen so this is my sister i'm like 24 like you must have had your stove on like 24 wow. hours a day like what are you doing that's a so, great way to ignite humanity a little bit of food <laughs> a little bit of food exactly so i knew that she I, it took her a bit to receive the quote unquote endowment um, but when she realized that she would be able to, no strings, no red tape, hand out money to worthy places. And I mean, she would be standing at a photocopier hearing about a situation with the child who was maybe in foster care or who had never had Christmas before or was uh, heading into grade nine and her mother had passed away in the summer or whatever the situation was, somebody that was on the fence of quitting school or not, struggling with with whatever as a teenager, right. um, she would take the time to write a note, an anonymous note about what she knew, what she saw, what she, what she perceived in that individual that they could achieve greatness. And I'm gonna get teary here. <laughs> um, and then she would, $500, $200, wow. whatever. She would buy Christmas. She handed, she, she handed money to the principal and the um, support person for one child who hadn't had Christmas up to the age of grade two. Mm, and, she, beautiful. and they bought Christmas connected with the, with the single mom and so on and so forth. So the whole school got excited and created joy in the middle of COVID <laughs> blah, 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 like the stress levels in that school system were at everywhere, okay? Well, it's, and, it's kind of phenomenal because our seventh principle of Igniting Humanity is to give often and offer all you can. I mean, one of the principles of Igniting Humanity mm -hmm. is to give 
often and offer all you can. And so when you're telling the story, I just, I'm smiling because this is truly one of the principles that is going to just absolutely ignite humanity. And so you, that's kind of, was it an ignite moment for you to watch her do this or to witness this, so, this magnanimousness of her? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to live vicariously because every single one, she would be calling me up and giving me the whole lay down because it's like, it's your money. And I'm like, but it's our joy. We called it the power of a nudge and mm. we hope to inspire other people. And that's why having this platform to be able to share this with you, the power of a nudge is just paying attention to humanity around you and who needs a gift. It doesn't have to be financial. It can be a smile. It can be a coffee. It can be shoveling somebody's driveway. It's just listening to those nudges to serve your other people in humanity. And so and you know that nudge is your intuition because you're yes. having this intuition that this person needs this or could use this or could value from this. And I can think of many times in my life where I, you know, one time a friend of mine showed up at an event and I said, I love your necklace. And she walked up to me, took it off her neck and put it on mine. Like in one second, like she didn't even say a word. And I remember yeah. that touched me so much that one time somebody said, I love your sunglasses. And I just took them off and gave them to them and mirrored what she had done to me. And you just get yeah. that nudge mm -hmm. to do it, to just do it, to like, don't think about it. Don't analyze it. Just do it. I love that, the power of the nudge. And so are you sort of, paying it forward, snowballing that, making that into a bigger mission? Yes, this would be the plan. This is the plan. Um, we haven't known the how or the what um, yet, but I think the how and the what is arriving with you today <laughs> as at least a, a part of it. So thank you so much. Um, I love that. I love that. Because sometimes the how and the what isn't matter because you know you know the why, the why you're doing it and the why behind it. And you know, 100%. it really is igniting humanity, one person at a time. It really is the example of this show. One person, she can, you helped your sister, your sister now is helping other people. Those people are gonna go on to help somebody else because somebody helped them. And yeah. I think people who don't help feel, they don't help because they never feel like anyone helped them. And so if we just keep helping others and supporting others, we're just really gonna grow this massive impact. Yes. Well, we just have a few minutes left. My goodness, we have to have you back on the show because we haven't even scratched the surface <laughs> of all the fun stuff that you're doing. But in the few minutes we have left, just really pour into the listeners. What do you want them to take away from this mm. episode, hearing directly from Heather? I can't say it enough how important that direct connection with yourself and with wherever you think intuition comes from. And it could be, people don't think of intuition always, they think of that on a pedestal, like you have to be a psychic or talk to dead people or whatever the case to have intuition. It is an innate GPS that each and every one of us have. It, it was given to us for survival. It was given us to us for love. It was also given to us for belonging. And if I can inspire everybody to listen, to themselves, listen to their intuition, listen to that guidance that comes down. The whole world is going to be a better place. I know it because Amen. when we're out of alignment with that intuition, the amount of stress that happens in our lives is paramount. paramount. We can't go to sleep at night. So if you can create peace by listening to your intuition more frequently, always, that would be my message for everybody here today. Um, it, I've seen it change too many people's lives from creating healthier boundaries to moving from a position at work to think about, you know, the dynamics of relationships in their lives to inspiring them to buy a pet or get a pet. <laughs> <adopt> <laughs> a pet. There's so many ways it shows up getting back to the earth and gardening. You mentioned nature at the very beginning about how everybody's an individual, like the peacock and the chickmunk and the whale. We are all individuals. And part of that individuality is our intuition. Mm. Part of what gifts we're supposed to be bringing to the world. So 
that would be my message to inspire and ignite people today is to listen to their intuition. So thank you. Again. So inspiring. So inspiring. So inspiring. Yeah. You nailed it. The theme of the day inspiration. You totally inspired me and inspired everyone listening. If you want to know more about Heather, check out her website below and find out what she's up to and reach out to her. Every single one of my guests love hearing from my viewers. So please reach out and let Heather know how she can support you. Thank you so much, my darling. I can't wait for us to do some more and hang out and play together. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. It's been a delight. Yes. Well, if you are feeling that nudge, listen to it. There's no... There's no reason to say no. I always say that there's no such thing as no. Say yes. So when you get the nudge to do something, to help somebody, to listen to somebody, to open the door for somebody, to walk back and just help somebody because ask them if they need help because you just had that feeling. If you've got the nudge to hug somebody, to tell someone you love them, to send them an email or a text or a voice message, or just walk across the street and say hello, follow that nudge. And if you have a nudge to take care of yourself, to listen to yourself, to sleep in, to get up early, to play, to exercise, to not eat that, to eat that, whatever that is, listen to that nudge. It is such great advice from Heather. And I want to inspire you all that when you're igniting humanity, it starts with you. And one of the ways that you want to empower you is to truly get connected to you and to your intuition, which is so, so valuable. And on a side note, when you follow your intuition, you teach the little people in your lives, the kids, to follow their intuition. And that's so, so important that children know how strong their intuition is to keep them safe and guide them forward. All right. Well, if you love this show the way I did, please reach out to our platform and you can download any one of our episodes, including this one. They're all recorded in our incredible Ignite platform and they are all free and available to you. No catch. That's right. You can just go there and get them for free and watch all of our episodes and see all of our guests with their amazing information. If you would like to be a part of what we're doing, go to ignitehumanity.life and check out our TV show, our movie, our book, our documentary, all the fun things that we're doing. In fact, if you have an Ignite moment, and you want to write it and you want to be published, please go to our website and you could be a part of our Ignite Humanity compilation book telling your Ignite story. I want to also share that we are making big moves in igniting the lives of children through our school program. If you'd like to donate, we would love to have you be a part of that. Please go to our link below and donate to us building schools in third world countries to help ignite the lives of children who absolutely need education. And we're building schools to make a place for them to do just that. Now, if you've got a great message and you would like to be on the show, fill out our type form and you could be a guest and share with others around the globe. Over 6 million viewers in 190 countries are watching this show and you met your message could be igniting them. So please reach out and fill out our type form so you could be a guest on our show. And last but not least, tomorrow, Thursday, I am doing my other TV show called The Legacy Lounge with Lady JB. And what I do is bring on legends, people who are really legends in their field who are creating legacy. Now, if we're going to ignite humanity, we have to be building our legacy. And what legacy means is that impact that is going to affect others. It's not about us and our name and shining the spotlights on us. Legacy is about building something that is going to help multiple people. And so we hope that you have a great time. Come join us at the Legacy Lounge. All right, have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow. Now, more than ever, we need to come together to connect with one another. <laughs> We need to feel the truth in who we are and let go of everything that's happened in the past. We need to empower every person on the planet and awaken hearts, enliven souls, come together, laugh, play, rejoice, connect, create, and love. It's time to ignite humanity. We want you to be a part of something that will impact the future for everyone. We want you to tell your story, share your ignite moment, show people who you truly are. Be a part of igniting humanity and making a difference in the world and all of our futures.